Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. It is late June and it's time to talk about corn fungicide application. My guest today is Ken Curra from BASF and we're going to talk about northern corn leaf blight, Gibberella airwatt, and something else you need to keep on your radar screen this year, tar spot. Here's Ken Curra. So Ken, I want to start this with a look back at 2021. I mean, we had record yields here in Ontario last year, top 200. What role did fungicide play in that corn yield last year? Yeah, it's a burn awesome corn crop last year, right? And you know, when we shot these videos at that time, we had a feeling that that was on the radar, that we could possibly come up with that big, big yield in a pretty widespread area of Ontario. We had a great looking corn crop through V5, V8, right up to V12 stage, got rain at the right time to push it. If you look at the way nitrogen availability works within the soil, that kind of coincided with that high demand curve leading up the tassel. And uh, you know, a beautiful yield foundation leading up to that fungicide application window at tassel and silking. And uh, for those that controlled disease last year with fungicides, or at least held those diseases back in those high pressure areas, we held that yield potential together. And we put mother nature together with the tools we use to manage a crop on the crop protection fertility side. And we came up with a big yield. That's for sure. Hey, now 2022 is gonna be a different year. And I, I wanna talk about something that's been on the uh, minds of most people and that's tar spot. We'll get to that in a second, but yep. let's just go through some of the fundamentals. Let's talk about, for example, timing for fungicide. Tassel, silk timing? Yeah, exactly. So that window opens at tassel. So let's talk about the plant health and disease suppression aspect of it first. We're really targeting two key diseases here in Ontario. Those primary diseases are northern corn leaf blight and then the new kid on the block, tar spot. Those are the true yield robbers here in Ontario. Tar spot overwinters, northern corn leaf blight blows in. So you kind of watch weather patterns to see how the environment plays into that setup on the disease triangle and overall risk of disease and yield impact to the crop. That window opens at, uh, at, at tasseling. If you're looking at working in dawn suppression, so control the gibberella ear rot, you're looking at adding a group three product for plant health. You know, you're gonna apply that basically once the green silks are available for coverage from the sprayer. So what I like to tell my growers, three quarters of an inch to an inch of silk protruding on at least 75% of the plants in the field, that window is open. And we hope that window is seven to 10 days um, during that silking timing, if we get intense heat over 30 degrees, that window is going to get short. If we get some moderate and overcast conditions, well, then we'll widen that window out, which certainly helps growers and applicators get across it. So yeah, that's your, that's your option on the dawn suppression side is to use uh, a tank mix of a strobiluron fungicide for plant health plus the dawn product or one of the, uh, the uh, all-in pre-mix products that, that target that scope of disease. Let's talk about tar spot, a disease that showed up here a couple of years ago, taking root over the last couple of years. And we expect to see, mm -hmm. de basically, on, ba depending on the environmental conditions, uh, that again here this year. You know, Ken, when you, when you talk about how to manage that, does the conversation really start like with the, the potential, the yield potential in your field? It starts with the yield potential in the field, but we also really focus growers and consulting agronomists, certified crop advisors on the disease triangle. So, I mean, this host crop, the corn, the disease pathogen and tar spot overwinters in Ontario on corn residue. So you can you can develop in your mind the high risk fields, right? Corn on corn, et cetera, et cetera. The areas where more corn is produced, London, Chatham area, the livestock areas, et cetera. Um, yeah, that, that disease overwinters here. And uh, we're really amazed, you know, last year was that example of the environment component of the yield triangle coming together to really create a high risk high disease pressure scenario and a high yield potential corn crop. So we can watch, uh, we can watch ag Twitter. We can watch weather Twitter to see what, what is happening in terms of disease spread in the Great Lakes Basin on those two key uh, diseases. You can watch your own fields, obviously, because tar spot is here in Ontario overwintering. Scouting, key part of the IPM process. And uh, really it is about the environment, right? If we continue to have extensive leaf wetness in that canopy, we will develop a high population of tar spot in those fields. Are we going to be able to get protection spraying the fungicides that we, you know, we, we are chasing northern corn leaf blight with, for example? Mm -hmm. What about that? Yeah, so 
It's really important, and, and uh, Albert Tenuta here in Ontario has done some great work with his tar spot screening trials on, on both hybrids and on the fungicide uh, product portfolio that's available to Ontario growers. And then that work dovetails into the uh, disease working group with the other plant pathologists and extension people he works with in the Great Lakes base. And their, their data set is, uh, is a huge help to agronomists such as myself. And it's a great help for growers to look at that data set and identify there are some, tar, uh, some products that have really delineated themselves as top performers on tar spot. There are products that have delineated themselves as top performers on northern corn leaf blight. And there's a product line that has delineated itself as a top performer on both key diseases. So I really encourage growers and agronomists to look at that data set. It's, uh, you know, it, it's a really good indicator of the product of choice depending on the disease pressure you expect to deal with. Final question, and that is on that environment. And it is late June now. What should growers be looking out for from an environmental perspective, a weather perspective over the next month? Yeah, so corn now is in that rapid growth stage, right? We're in, we're in basically some, some nine leaf corn. I really encourage growers from a field selection perspective, especially in my territory, because I have so much drought prone ground of which we're standing on here today. This crop looks really good right now. Two dry weeks from now, it could look kind of tough. I really encourage growers when they asked me on the eve of fungicide application in the middle of July, you know, I, I had a good looking crop. We've been dry for two or three weeks. We've been hot. It's looking stressed midday. Bottom leaves are firing a bit. Like, I, I don't know if I should go there. Well, first of all, I look at, can we achieve or maintain 180 bushel yield potential? Uh, if we're under 180 bushels, it's really tough to get that payback on, on a fungicide. You need to have a discussion about harvestability, standability, and those risks due to the disease proliferation if not for yield. But I really challenge growers when they're in that scenario that go back to today, right? Go back to the eight, nine leaf stage up to the V12 stage. Cause by V12 about this height, your corn crop's gonna set all of its kernel round and all of its kernel length. All those yield slots on that corn ear are gonna be set. So it's about the corn plant maintaining those slots. And that's where the fungicide benefit comes in post silking to give it that the plant that disease protection. So if you're concerned about drought, remember what your corn crop looked like between let's say five and 12 leaf, because that's really when the yield potential is set. And in my career over 10 plus years of fungicide use, I've had so many growers who caught a rain just post tassel on some droughted corn that looked great early on and realized that they had more yield potential there than what they expected. Mm -hmm. Well, Ken, hey, some great insights. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time for Corn School. Fantastic. Love doing it, Bern.